last heat to the North American swing. It's round six of the BMW IBSF Men's Bobsleigh World Cup for two man. And we are here at the Olympic Sliding Center in Whistler. The venue for the 2010 Winter Games sees us heading into a titanically close final race of these three North American weekends. Martin Haven and John Morgan with the action for you, Trackside and John. What a finale we've got in store at the fastest ice on the planet. Yeah, team Justin Cripps, Alex Kovacs, they had great starts, second best starts. And like he did last night, Cripps driving well, lost a little time on the bottom of the track, broke the track record. He was the first man down, but the track record would get broken again. Chris Spring, Lascelles Brown, the Springer, hasn't been on the podium since Calgary in 2013. Well, he just showed everybody else that maybe he's coming out of his slump and he could be on the way to winning his second ever World Cup two-man medal if he drives like he did in the first run. But this guy, Alexander Kasanov, and his push man, push up. Wow, last night he was the leader at the end of the first run. He ended up missing the gold by one hundredth of a second. Tonight, again, he's the leader at the end of the first run, and he's got a little bit more of a cushion. He's got a four hundredths lead tonight. And we're set up again to have an amazing bobsled race like we did last night, Martin. We're four sleds. We're separated by two hundredths of a second. Yeah. And this insanely tight top four covered by 1100s, top five by 12. Stephen Holcomb, two tenths back, definitely not out of the medals. Last year's winners, uh, last week's winners, Rico Peter and Yun Jung Wan, are in seventh and ninth position. But with two Canadians in the top three, Stulnef will be, uh, Kazinov rather, will be feeling the pressure when he goes last. Dagrai Conchella and Nick Taylor do not go for a second heat, of which Nick may be thankful. He popped out of the back of the sled like a piece of toast out of a toaster when they smoked the wall mightily. But it does mean that he, Spence, and Lachlan Reedy of Australia get a second run here tonight, which they didn't last night. Well, there's Kashinov and his great man, Alexei Pushkarev. And they will be keeping themselves warm, keeping themselves focused, getting ready to go last of the 20 sleds. And the ice by that stage will be even colder even faster than it has been all weekend. This is going to be the quickest ice ever seen in sliding. And John, it is great to be trackside here in Whistler to witness it. Two Canadians crisping there on the exercise bike. Below him in your shot, Justin Cripps on the podium. Last time two Canadians men were on the podium, Cripps won. Lyndon Rush took bronze at Koenigsegg in 2014. Justin's only two-man race win. Last Canadians to medal in Canada, Spring and Lumsden on the podium in Calgary, as you said, two seasons ago. Heath Spence will be the first off. Francesco Friedrich will sit in and let Candy Bauer do the donkey work, trying to get some points to keep himself in the top 10 for the Worlds, should he be fit. And Alexander Kasyanov, no pressure. Just saw it snatched away from him yesterday in the final run. He's got to avoid that happening again when he goes last once more on the Whistler ice. Super Speedway here at the Whistler Sliding Center. Pretty five-star facility. And here we go. Getting the final run of the weekend underway. Heath Spence and Lachlan Reedy traveled overnight to get here on Tuesday. Traveling overnight when they finish this race to get back to Calgary tonight. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie is the chance at the top. Away they go. Started 5.05 in the first heat. And oh, a little uncomfortable lead from Lachlan, a low from Lachlan and Reedy. 5.05 first run, 5.11 there. And they changed runners, went through his sled. Couldn't believe he was that slow last night, he told me. And the runners he had on last night are been now relegated to his practice set. And this is his race runners. And he was 30, 40, 100 better tonight than he was last night. But of course, everybody's better tonight. It's a fast track. Well, plus he hasn't driven a racing bobsled for a long while. So he's really 
hurrying up to get here and he's going to have to get back for work on Monday as well. Real pressure operation for him and Lachlan Reedy. And so Ozzy's filtering into town for Australia Day on Monday, which is going to be a huge celebration. Across the line, 52-82 the first run, 52-79, so tidied up a few bits and pieces. There's his compatriot and former brakeman Lucas Matter, who's now driving himself. He was one of our forerunners before the race. He made, yeah, it down. he made it down, no problems. And Heath has a moment or two in the leader's box, along with Lachlan Reedy. Happy with those two runs in the same way that he Which wasn't he happy with flops yesterday. Flops off there, and now he's going to enter that looter's loop and a little bit of adjustment. You saw the back end of the sled coming down, and that's what that looter's loop can do. That's where we saw the American sled just about crash out of the competition. A big smile from Heath Spence. Not bad for a ranger. This is a sad story to watch. Well, Francesco Friedrich still had a big smile at the bottom of the track, so he's not in intense agony, but any injury he's got now will only be aggravated by running. So Candy Bauer will do the donkey work, horsing it off from the top. You know, Friedrich entered the competition as the World Cup leader, and in the first heat yesterday, he completed the run in the top six or seven and next thing you know he didn't start the second run and we're still perplexed why he did not get world cup points yeah, should have got points for 21st uh, 20th place 20th in fact, place he was 20th he completed the run you should score points even if you don't make the second heat you score points for whatever position you finished in so we'll wait he and was see in how that is third. Out. He was in third after the first heat yesterday. So he was, yeah. Compete. So I don't understand that and what pain he must have been in not to go in the second run. It's a groin pull. And those groin pulls, sports running, you know, all that injury stuff, that takes a long time to recover. And he's gathering points to stay in the top ten for the World Championships, but, you know, he's not going to compete in St. Moritz, so I don't know how he's going to stay in the top ten. 52-35, and he's 400 slower. And Unless he's under the knife in two weeks' time, I'm sure he'll have had any surgery that he needs by then. Unless he is, then he needs to be surgery. sitting in and driving. Look how tender he's getting out of this sled. Yeah. Why? I just don't understand why he even chance it. You know, look at me. He, he can wow. barely... This is probably the best athlete in the front seat in yeah. the world. Two times world champion. You know, how about the Germans today? Uh, Lochner went in the junior world championships yeah. in the in, two and the four, so yeah. he gets an automatic bid. So the Germans will have four sleds. And look at them play with the runners there. Perfect. Entry of the curve down at 910. And he still leads the race He's for the moment at least. They made a tough stuff, these bobsledders. Next up for the Netherlands, Ivo de Bruyne and Igor Brink, and they were 2300s in front. See the Belgians rushing to the line to see what's going on. Lots of Canadian fans and athletes watching as well from the side of this Whistler Sliding Centre. Well, our friend Ivo de Bruyne has got a double passport, married a Canadian girl who's mm -hmm. overdriving in Europe. So. Yeah, they'll catch up again when he gets back to Europe. Or when he gets away to Europe, he now lives in Calgary. 4.95, first start for Evo. Let's see if he should get maybe a couple hundred slower, equal, 97. 17th place yesterday, 18th after the first heat tonight. Let's see if he can tidy it up. It was all a little bit slippy slidey at the top of the run in the first heat. Slingshot, the top of the track, fall away, seven story drop, and a little bit of a skid up top. We'll keep our eyes on those two very important curves. He should now motor away from Francesco Friedrich. Better speed on board, but rubs all the way down the wall. Anytime you hear that noise, those pops. Through shit up, and then the gold rush trail. 50-50 is pretty tame tonight. It's so tame in the women's event. Good speed, 133 and 151.2 at the bottom. Goodbye from the leaders' box for Francesco Friedrich and Candy Bauer. And That's in come 
Evo and Eagle. Pretty sad to see an athlete of his stature, Francisco Friedrich, be wounded like this in the middle part of the year. And that's what the sport's all about. I mean, you have to be some kind of strong athlete to put up with this dry land training in July, August, and September. Get on the ice in October, take 150, 200 runs, and hope your body holds up. And his body didn't. Yep. Here's Ivo De Bruyne down in the seven in the eight section of the chicane, and I think he had a little back end skid going into the nine ten. But they're the leaders, enjoying the leaders' box moment. Yes, they are. So. Ivo De Bruyne and Eagle Brink. See, leading. Eagle had that blue vest on. That's a burn vest. So when you do tip over, you don't get your flesh burned up. Next up, Billy Meyer Hans and Nikolai Ekimov, the second of our Swiss sleds. The A-team finished yesterday's race in 15th place, as I recall. No, that was, uh, he was 16th. 48 years young, yep. the driver. So he, too, is one spot behind where he was yesterday. He drives well. 1100 is faster than Evo de Bruyne from the first heat and starts 100 slurs, so he's got a tenth in his pocket as he sits down. Pretty good exit of curve one, and then slingshot fall away now he's into the part of the track they call the wedge and this is exit of four this is no easy task teams have dipped over there this week and now into six as he flop off here not bad looters loop dives out of there let's see his runner tips here and that dive made him go up on the outlet of the curve and looters loop still in front by five hundredths of a second and we don't think he's in the front anymore. No. 133.9, same speed as the Dutch, right in there or thereabouts. Speeds. Needs 151s at the bottom to try and get this back. Doesn't have it, big skid. He drops a spot by 700s only, though he was coming back to them. Goodness, that was close. Man, look at the times. Barring that skid, he would have been in front. Started sliding about 15 years ago with Martin Ennett, mm. great Swiss pilot, Olympic medalist. Yeah, better part of 20 years ago when he yeah. started as a brakeman. And Alan retired. Loaders loaded to watch him dive to the middle of the curve. So now he's going to go back up in the outlet. At the back end comes down and watch him on the outlet here. A little rough. Yeah. Bang. And now that causes a skid. And, you know, he, here in the finish, this is not the way to come up to the finish line. You see the red line in the yeah. ice? You don't want to be skidding across the ice like that. Could, that could have been worth the 700 so he fell yeah, behind. Definitely. But good North American trail from him. He's got another bang on that elbow. Oh. That's the second one. Nikita Zaharov for Russia with Max Belugin behind him. He had Max Makrosov in the sled yesterday. Uh, they started 493 in the first heat to lie 15th, tied with Oscar's Keeper Manis of Latvia. Okay, get in, get down. The first curve, they call it slingshot. The second curve, fall away. Well, what it is out of slingshot right here, you fall seven stories. <laughs> it's what a drop. The TV doesn't do it justice, just how steep it is from curve one to two. Try and walk up there, Mark. Yeah. It's really astonishing. Of course, that's why this track has so much speed. It's steep. 102.2, great speed from this Valna sled. River sled, rather. And a big skid. Where is he in the speed traps? 133s. Does he have anything left? 131.6. Now, he was only... He was two tenths in front of Ivo De Bruyne, but now he's not. Oh, he's behind. De Bruyne be had close. 151 at the bottom. Oh. 400s back. They pick off a second one. So Loaders is not real happy with that. And he's, of course, his teammate is in the lead, going for the gold medal, Kasanov. Mm -hmm. So for him to be back here, Zakharov. Well, the, the uh, Kasinov leads. The other two Russians were 52 and 54 hundreds behind, so they're in a completely different team different, to Kasinov. Different planet. Yeah. Watch how low he gets here. Watch the back end of the sled. See the back end here. Now watch he comes back up in the outlet and bang. Comes tries to sneak out of there too early. No. You know, so so much precision here. Not a, a one or two curves. 12, 15 curves. <laughs> Every curve's a challenge. Ivo de Bruyne leads for the Netherlands. Five down, 15 still to come. 
Top of the track is Oscars Kibermanis with Mattis Mignis behind him on the Latvian sled. Fastest starters in the competition ended up 15th position. You know, just think of a superstar athlete coming out of college, going to the pro ball, and just not delivering. This guy here, for the last couple of years, 20 years old, he was on the World Cup tour. Watch these two athletes from Latvia sprint and jump in this sled. 476 in the first heat could be better. 477. He's got 4300s lead. And his driving has just been erratic. He's in a slump. And I don't think it's the equipment. But, but if he's got a slow Latvian sled, he'll be the only Latvian who's got a slow Latvian sled. And the only customer of BTC who's got a slow Latvian sled. It's, you know, the dog is only as good as its master, I like to say. Here with that start, he's accelerated to 5300s. Hey, we're all pulling for him. This is a super athlete. Dude. And it's a better looking drive, but then the first one didn't look that shabby. One, no! two, six, and he's gone. Just trying to take too much down at the bottom of the track. 50 50. He'll finish, not the way he wants to finish. And there'll be a brief track hold to inspect for damage, and they will try and get the hooks in and stop the sled. You can see he's almost totally out of the sled yeah, there. He's panicking there. He should get back. I mean, but he wants to stop been it rolling so back. Frustrated with his performance, the best starter in the competition. Teammates are down there trying to help out with the medical staff. Both guys are up more than tough. Look, yeah. Look, at, he, he, you know, look, he's trying to get out. He can't get away. Hold, from look this at the medical fast staff. Fast enough. Hold him. I mean, he, he wants to go and hide. Look at. They should just sit him down. I mean, he is going to run away. Look, there he just throws his shoe. And the adrenaline does uh, yeah, remarkable yeah, this things. This is why somebody should body. grab him. Yeah, absolutely. Got to sit him down. Let the adrenaline go. Shoulder problem. That's where they wear those burn vests. Yeah. Seeing drivers walk away from wrecked cars with broken legs and then collapse once the adrenaline starts to sag. Well, thumbs up there from his brake man, Mattis Mignis. Watch him tap. Tap on the take on, throws you in the middle of the curve, and you got no place to go. And then the lights go on. Watch him tap the left side here, into the curve. That's the problem in the 50 50. If you don't come over there with a precise six, eight inches to the take on, this is what happens. This is not. Sled's trying to come pretty. back, but the weight of the bodies just rolls it over. Elfie Williamson, one of the best drivers in women's bobsleigh. Look at this stud come up. Yeah, that is Magnus. <laughs> Again, you can see he's got a Burns vest on, and yeah. understandably so. Look at his size. I mean, the biggest, fastest athletes in the United States are in the NFL. The biggest, fastest athletes in Latvia are in the sport of bobsleigh, because all three teams get great starts. Well. Brakeman walks up, driver walks away. Yeah, the medical, you see there's a medical person taking him. Yeah. Look, they're, 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 he's still upset with himself down there. And these medical guy's trying to get him to go into a, he looks like a doctor there with him. The Brakeman looks good. They checked him out. And yeah. There's Tony Carlino, track manager for Lake Placid, watching intently on the, 50 50 curve and look at these pictures wow we saw a lot of this during the olympics the best drivers wolfgang stopper yep. Kathleen martini there's a very frustrated and well, there's awesome, our break, awesome. He's, oh no that is the driver yes. yeah, he's down at the uh, the dock Oscar's where they pull the sled Mattis. out he is an awesome athlete that has been had a rough north american tour and Maybe a couple of weeks off might help his spirit. Yes. Eva and Good. Igor. That's probably not a bobsledder here that doesn't know what it's like to go over. Not many go over at the speed that you do here. And a big appreciative crowd of Latvians at the top of the track. Very, very, very frustrated athlete right there. Yep. A couple of weeks not having to drive will definitely help before we get back to Samaritz. You know, he's the best start in the competition. Evo De Bruyne is our race leader from Nikita Zaharov and Billy Meyerhans of Switzerland lies third. 13 sleds still to go here in Whistler. Two minutes to start. Two minutes to start. 
Oscar's Cuba Manis will get 20th spot, no worse, because he can't drop out. He did cross the finish beam with everybody still in the sled, which is one of the reasons that they try and hang on. The other one, of course, is that if you're inside the cowling, that's rubbing on the ice rather than you. Cuba's Manis will stalk back to the team. And in a day or two, when they get back to Europe, they will sit down and watch the video, and he'll try and figure it out. And next time he comes, he'll try and figure it out a little better. But the frustration of any world-class athlete making a mistake so is always the same. St. Moritz, two weeks in Innsbruck, then the World Cup final in Birch's Garden, Koenigsee. He won't be crashing anymore in those four weeks. He would have broken to break they're the leaders yep. they probably would rather not be the leaders and rather see keeper Manis finish and... well they lead with a tie for 13th That's next great. up so yeah. they are getting closer to a top 12 finish potentially now they may not get there but last night 17th their only two-man race of the season hopefully the Dutch Olympic Committee is looking on and seeing what this Evo de Bruyne can do with nickels and dimes. If they give him a little bit of budget, this guy could give, return Dutch bobsledding to what it was. To be honest, I think there's more likely to be some coming out from Vim Normans at Eurotech than there is from any Dutch Federation, and that might be the big difference for them. Track has been cleared for Alexei Stulnev of Russia. Maxim Mokrusov behind him. They started 11th fastest, came down tied for 13th, half a second off the pace. Let's see if they can break the tie and move up the order. He's got a 2,500s lead in De Bruyne at the bottom. He should be the leader, hands down, not no. He's got to make some serious mistakes. Let's see about a curve one. 492, a little bit of a slower start for them, still adds to their advantage. Three, sec three tenths of a second over De Bruyne sitting into the sled. But already that advantage is starting to ebb away. 100.4 De Bruyne, 100.6. Still has done pretty good in four man bobsled, better in four man than two man. Tenth place last week, in, or tenth place last night in the uh, race here. Well, he stopped losing time, and the ice will probably only get faster. 133.9 to Brun, 133.7. Yeah, that 50-50, all you got to do is miss the take on. The flat wall, the take on, you get through there, no problem. 150.2, slower than De Bruyne, but he takes the lead away from the Dutch, who move into second place. 400's better than his first run, so shows the track. Still has some time left in it, even though the, it's been scratched up on the bottom. De Bruyne had the fastest time through the final speed trap, 151.2, highest speed rather, not fastest time. 51.79, the run for Alexei Stolnev. He takes the lead, but he's about 10 places from where he needs to be and See, about 12 from where he wants to be. He's about six, eight inches beyond where Kieber Manis was, and he hits the take on perfectly. Gets through 50-50, gets a spot in the leader's box. Alex Stolnev of Russia. Tied with our current leader after the first of our two heats was Dong Yong Kim of Korea. Kwembo Kim breaking him. And these guys tied 13th, 52 hundredths off the lead. So between them and our current leader, Alex Stolnev, nothing at all, not even a hundredth of a second on aggregate. Choreography on ice. Watch the way these guys get in with cohesion, especially the Koreans. They're so well schooled and the technique of getting in a sled. One thing is to push it, the other thing is to get in with that cat like movement and sit down. Don't alter the sled, especially up top where the speeds are slow and any kind of a left to right movement is just going to erase your time. 492, same start time as the Russians, so they were tied there, oh. but he's got a slight lead. Curve six, Could just have given it all away. Lost a lot right there. Recovered, but still red numbers. Looter's loop got him bad. This wasn't good either. Oh, faster late. than the Russians. Watch out. He's late. Oh, and he's gone. He's got, he, you know, he made the mistake three, four quarters up. Oh, 
He's out. There's a DQ. Boy, why did they get out of the slip? Oh, he caught they, no, I mean, Now they handles. really, now they really got to catch the slip because the the athlete owner didn't come up far enough. There's the hook. They still do such a the fantastic yeah. job here in Whistler. Their track crew does it. Awesome job. Coaches and teammates rushing down to help out. German doctor on his way down as well. Get the other athletes up. They yeah. should sit him down. That's Quambo Kim. I think he's going to sit I himself down. I think he down. got more hurt and yeah. getting out of that sled. Boy, you, te you know, you, you can't practice. Well, when you're doing 80, 90 miles an hour, I don't think you kick out on purpose. I think he's just pulled this out. This is top of gravity. the track, curve six. Yeah. Okay, now watch. He's, he's out of control here. He's he, up in Luter's loop. Look at airborne on the entry, up towards the lip, down. So he just never caught up with it. And then he hits the take on here way in advance where he's supposed to get on in middle of the curve. Watch this. He hits it way. He's three feet away where he should be. Yeah. And at that stage, you've got to haul it off, and he doesn't realize the danger he's in early enough, and he doesn't oh. haul it off early enough. You know, most tracks, the with their you heads. Can, most tracks, you can make a mistake like that and get away with it. Here, the 50-50 yeah. <laughs> curve. Well, how many sleds have we had down? Two, three, four, five, six, eight sleds down. It's taken it's, two. It's, so it's 25%, but there was a time when they first started coming on this track when it gets really cold here. It's getting cold now. It's really, you make any kind of mistake down there and it penalizes you. Most of the time in most tracks, you get penalized with the time loss. So, hold on. And then his, why wouldn't he stay in the sled? His brakeman's trying to hold on, but you just get pulled out of the sled. And he's barely hanging on, and then he loses. He's got like one or two fingers hanging on, and then he just can't hold five times his own body weight in the sled. What a picture. Yeah, yes. and they and they all know it's safer to be in the sled than it is to be out of it. And he knows. Look at that! It's the dismay that he's out, and they don't even get a finish. It's the driver. Yeah. No, it's the brake. It's the driver. It's the driver. Okay. So that is one in. And he's good. Medical staff yeah. all over. Dong Young Kim and Quimbo Kim is a little further down. And he gets dis disqualified because yeah. he didn't finish intact. So it's a little colder, a little faster. Guys are coming down faster than they've ever come down this track. You know, in the first mistake he made where the, it was just curve six, he's late. And I mean, there's people have been tipping over up there. Then Looter's Loop, watch the airborne a part of the sled. And you know, he's up near the roof. Now he's got to come down. And now he's like going 75 miles an hour. And seems here though, that Gets he it off, got it in yeah. control. Nice line there, he's in control. You would think that would have been the warning sign so, though. But here he pulls it down again too early there. Now he's flat where he should have been on the exit of the curve. It's the transition here. You've got to be right within three or four inches. And if and you're not, is, then it, you're in all right sorts here, of Right here, down, trouble. back up in the outlet. And watch the hedge as they slap. Now this is where he taps, and this is where he gets behind. Look at the sled. was airborne there again. Yep. It's almost like he doesn't even have his hands in the D-rings because he... Well, he does, but it's late. all just happening in front of where he thinks just, it's happening. Just couldn't recover. He, yeah. You know, he, he was... Never got caught up, did he? Behind the eight ball for about six curves. And finally caught up to him. And boy, I feel for both the driver and the brakeman there. Hope the, I don't see the brakeman. I see the driver, but I don't see the brakeman. Alexei Stulnev is our race leader for Russia. Ivo De Bruyne in second place, continuing to rise up the order, De Bruyne, because there are now only 12 sleds left, so he will be no worse than 14th, with two dropping down after the crashes. Kiba Manis will get a finish, but the Kims for Korea won't get a finish result because they didn't cross the line together. A dozen sleds still to go, and the longer the track holes go on, the more the pressure is on those that are still to come not to get it wrong. Don't think yeah. that athletes are not sitting up there in that warming shed looking at each other. This is back in the day when, when I competed, and before me and my father was a, a man against the mountain. You compete, you go down the track, you get to the bottom. Wow, I made it. 
Well, by the way, what was my finish time? Yeah. And the modern day bobsledding is not like that. You know, modern day bobsledding guys are looking at their times as they're coming across the finish line at 70 miles an hour. It's all about hundreds of a second here. Track is clear for Simone Batato as we resume racing in the sixth round of the BMW IBSF two man bobsleigh World Cup in Whistler. Martin Haven, John Morgan watching the action. Two crashes in the last three sleds will have set nerves a jangling in the changing rooms. Let's see if old hand Simone Batato can calm a few of those with a good run. Simone Batato, Simone Fontana. And I got a lot of money, I bet, right now that he makes it safely down the track because this is probably the most experienced eyes and hands in the field. You know Corey Butler's going to pick you up now on this if he crashes. He's already said you jinxed Elfie Williamson in the women's race. Tied for the lead. He had a 1,200s advantage over Alexei Stulner from the first heat. That has all gone. Now he's down to four, though. This is, this is what a good driver can do. You can get rewarded down here. Let's see if he can find the speed in this second run. No problem. He's, he's barely steering. Speed, excellent. Much quicker than his first. Boy, this is right to the hundredth of a second. He's got a chance. He's got a good line. No! Still that moves up. But he slips in in front of Ivo de Bruyne. Denies the Dutchman a chance to move up again. So Simone Batazzo loses one spot. Forza Italia. Forza Italia. Lots of support from the trackside fans here. They get a little chilly. They need to keep themselves warm somehow. Get a little chilly. So look at the lines here. Barely any variance from Batazzo. But something happened because he was reducing the deficit all the way to here. And then he went from, got it down to two, and then it fell away to 600s in the end. Maybe just having to drive a little too much in the final corner. Big uh, exhalation from him. Sigh of relief as much as anything, I think, for getting down in one piece. Into the top 10 now. We have 11 sleds in our top 10. Mm -hmm. Because we had a tie for 10th position, Nick Cunningham and Carlo Valdez tied the time set by Max Arndt and Martin Putzer. Let's see if Cunningham can produce a better result than yesterday's two-man race. He was a little bit disappointed, to say the least, with 14 spot. Track athletes from the driver from Boise State, the brakeman from UCLA. And Nick Cunningham's problem has been on the exit of curve one. He cannot get through here with a clean run. 49, very consistent start, just like he had. Look what he does here, and still can't get through there clean. Less worse than his three runs so far that we've seen in yesterday and today's races. He's got 2,200s lead. It's a lot of time, and that should go out to 25 or 26 here. The next clock, if he's got quiet lines. Quiet lines meaning not steering. Getting himself nicely 26. dialed in. Good speed, 101.6, fastest we've seen bar the uh, Ooh, Russian late. Zakharov. Ooh, airborne in trouble. Watch out, watch out. Over. We got some issues here. And again, 50-50 claims another victim. It is 50-50 for the last three sleds. And the last six sleds, rather. It's taken three of six. Cunningham was getting behind there and stayed behind. Couldn't respond fast enough. Brakeman's up. Yeah. Waves. Carlo Valdez is out. And Cunningham hopefully will be out as well. He's already got a banged up ankle. He doesn't need anything else to be banged up in the crash. You know, the mistakes are on the exit of Shiver. They're coming off there, banging out of 12, and then they just become late to 12 to th into the 50 50 curve. And it's. I just want to see Nick up, and here he comes. Yeah. You know? Here's the sh exit of Shiver. This is what we talk about. He's going to come hit the left hand wall, bang. That pushes him over in the middle of the curve. Look at the airborne. We yeah. knew there he was in trouble. And then he's still 100 meters down.
taps there, he taps and goes into the middle and then, then it's lights out. It's, watch it, here's the reverse angle of it. Bang, and you know, it's a mistake everybody's making. It's like that wall has got to be extended because it's so unforgiving. And it's not only tonight, it's during the Olympics. Yeah. So I'm having exactly that conversation with Rennie Spies. We're talking about the other transition that really gets everybody. The one at Altenburg is it 11 to 12 as well. That's, uh, he said, you know, another three or four inches just to, to ease that transition would make the world of difference. It might just be that we need to start reforming the concrete under the ice to change the profile of that. Well, Nick, I think, his, I think that's his ankle right there. Look at him. Yeah, they're sitting him down. He's taking a good bang in the sled. The drivers sit with their legs in front of them, but basically, the, as soon as you have the pressure taken off of you, you're not bracing yourself against the foot pegs and your legs get banged around. Tough Latour down there. There's some concussion protocol going on. Yep. Well, he's not worried about the bit at the top. He's worried about the bit at the bottom. Here's, you know, it's just getting in that curve late. And, uh, you know, doesn't we, come back. Is, you know, there's a different color sleds, but it's the same lines. Alexis Stolnev still our race leader. Simone Batazzo and Ivo De Bruyne in the top three will take a quick pause as we get ready for our top 10 sleds next here in Whistler. Well, another brief track hold for cleanup operations. And, uh, most importantly, checking out the athletes and removing the sled from the track. Nick Cunningham did come across the line behind Oscar's Kiba Manis or a slower time, so he is currently ninth. You know, it's it's driver error entering curve 12 there, and it's but it's it's a lot of driver error. Yeah, and they hit they hit before the curve. Well, again, as we said, this track has never been as fast as it has been today, and that means it is quicker than the track they trained on. And that is going to lead you astray every time. In fact, it's quicker than the track they were on in the first heat. So again, what you learned in heat one doesn't necessarily translate here into heat two. Coaches and teammates helping with the sled, helping the track workers get it out, get it into the scabbards, ready for transport. There's one of the, the Kim, the brakeman yeah. who crashed for Korea, hanging out down there. Great camaraderie here in the sport. Definitely. Athletes have such a respect for each other. Carlos Valdez at the bottom part of our screen. There's his coach, Seth Plaza, checking out the show. There's Nick yep. up and at him, and there's the doctor on the right. You doctor know. looks happy. Book is closed on this one. And good for all these athletes who've yep. had crashes or haven't that they're going to get a couple of weeks before we get back into World Cup action in Samaritan. And the track is gouged up. It, it is. should be. Look, there's the take it on is. the Thunderbird and a lot of lines there. You don't think it's much, but when you're dealing with hundreds yeah. of seconds at 90 miles an hour, there is some relevance to that. Us oldies that remember driving on uh, cross-ply bias belted tires know what happens when a car starts to follow the road. You don't want a bobsled to do that at 90 miles an hour either. Ten sleds down, ten to go, three crashes in the last six sleds to go. In fact, three in the last five down the, the uh, track. And we're going to have a little pause here at the Whistler Sliding Center to repair some of the major gouges in the ice. And John Morgan, that's done with slushing. Essentially, it's water and ice in a bucket and use a, a plasterer's trowel to spread it on and, and try and fill in some of the bigger holes. Here you can see the... Uh, Bald-headed figure of Nick Cunningham, he and Carlo Valdez, and their bobsled getting back into the truck, and there is, is the slushing. Just normal maintenance, and they're going to just, you know, they get some snow in there, and they put some water in there, and they get some slush, and they just patch it up, but uh, they got a lot of patching to do. Well, they're never going to replace all those gouges in five minutes, but where it takes a big chunk out, that is what they're going to try to replace, because they don't want it leading runners astray and causing problems. Everybody at the top of the track will be feeling, again, a little more nervous, a little more apprehensive. This is the third track hold in five sleds, and everybody knows why. And the nerves will have been jangling anyway. 
can see the marks where the runners have gone, the very faint marks, and then the big gouge marks where the side of the cowl has dug in. Uh, a lot of the push handles are actually steel that are, uh, are formed into the composite bodywork. So they will dig into the ice, the, the bales, the, the bits that stick out at the front and the back of the sled to protect the uh, cowl from the wall. There's Stephen Holcomb, distinctive figure of man who won Olympic gold on this track back in 2010. And the guy who gave the curve where all the problems are, the name 5050. Mm -hmm. There's Christoph Lyon. He's, you know, he, what he's doing now is talking to the jury. Yeah. Two There's minutes. Many. Two minutes. Two minutes. He's just finding out what time no, he's it is. He's asking two minutes. I think yeah. he's. He's asking. His, uh, his driver's up next. Yeah. That's First of his there. three, uh, second of his three men ready to go you next. You know, plus the thing about this slush, it just, you know, you put it in there, that just doesn't immediately freeze. It needs a little bit of time. I mean, this is just like your ice hockey rink, but it's on a little bit of a, an incline. An incline. <laughs> and, you know, there's only about six inches of ice. I think it's generous, maybe three inches of ice. Set plunges. Yeah. Swiss, who's been coaching the U.S. off and on for the last 10 years. Well, there is the one of the signature corners here, Thunderbird, the big final 180-degree corner here at the Whistler Sliding Center. And the one that gets everybody's attention. Well, it started towards the top, didn't it? First few days of training, it was four, then exit seven, Luda's Loop. And then, almost inevitably, it moved down to 50-50, the focus of attention. Once you sort the top out, you're going even faster when you get to 50-50. And that really quick turnover. Here's our three crashes so far. Kieber Mattis first up. Watch him climb and watch the way he hits the wall. And then, you know, then he comes in a 50-50 and the sled's got no place to go. He's got no, it's just a flat wall that he hits and he's over and then here comes Kim from Korea, you know, he has problems up there in the shiver curve. Watch it come over and tap this wall and then climb to the airborne, climb to the top. And then this is like a replay of Kieber Mattis, just a different color sled. And then here comes Cunningham, same exact thing. Watch the sled get airborne right there. And then same result. All three sleds look like the exact same problem. Uh, and it is a sequence of corners. If you're wrong in 11, you're yeah, not going to be right by the time you get to 50-50. Yeah, it's a mistake 100 yards above 50-50 that causes all the action. Again, Holcomb gave it the name 50-50 when they first started the model game, made the track in the, when they came here for the World Cup in 2009. Germany's Max Arndt gets our action back underway. Tenth in the first heat, tied with Nick Cunningham, who just crashed out. And Max Arndt with Martin Putzer behind him tonight. I bet a lot of money this guy doesn't crash. He won't thank you for that. Ninth place in yesterday's race. Can he pick up another position tonight and equal that 488 getaway? Well, that's what they did in the first heat when there had been no crashes. So they are clearly giving it the full Monty off the top of the hill. Martin Putzer. Silver medalist on this track in the 2010 games behind Andre Lange and the four-man bobsled. He was also a gold medalist with Mark, with uh, Andre Lange at the 2006 games. He's the old man, he calls himself on the team, and he's pushing the oldest driver for the Germans, Max Arndt, who's the World Cup leader in four-man right um, now. I'm the old boy, fully 28 now. Look how much control he had yep. coming down here. So Good speed, too. There's just no room for air. Ducks his head. He will be the leader by only 10 hundredths. 51.85. He goes 18 hundredths slower. Yeah. I don't think there's any more time left in the track. I think the track's a little wounded. Well, I wonder if, because uh, the speed was dropping off all the way down, actually, and I wonder whether we are now starting to see the damp in the air, the cool of the air, whether the track is frosting a little at the top as well. Look at these, this line. A little skid in the back, but he's in that chicane. It's not a straightaway, it's a little bit of a bend away, and then gets into the 9 10 curve they call the Lynx. Max, he's just waiting for the four man race. Well, the other deal, of course, is that having just seen three crashes, you know that if you don't crash, you're in a good position to stay where you are. And maybe he was just being conservative with, conservative with the drive lines, not to get hurt, not to bang up Putzer. 
Because the World Championships is what everybody's focused on. Well, last night, Yun Jung won, and Yong Wo Seo of Korea claims the country's first ever bobsled gold medal. They're first in ice sliding for the country. First from Asia. Yeah. And a joint victory with Rico Pater. Tonight, they find themselves ninth after the first heat. Had a lot of problems at the start in the first run. Four, only 484. They should get in the mid 70s, high 70s. 488. Again, that's suspect. But at least they got oh, in, but he still has skid the big there. skid. Bad skid there. And he had he got his foot tangled up with the D-Rung in the first heat and just, just did everything wrong. And into one, out of one. And that's why he's back here. He is the World Cup leader. And had awesome speed on the bottom part of the track in this first run, like he did last night. And will remain the World Cup leader, as likely as not, if he escapes 50-50 safely, and he should do, that's a good line. Plus eight to plus eight. Well, that means he's not eating into Max Hart's time. Hart didn't have great speed, down to five. This could go right to the hundredth. He needs 149, 150, he's got 150. Two. Oh, two hundreds behind. Boy, the, that little bump on the exit of Thunderbird going uphill was worth the 200s, but we can't beat him up. One John one, what he did last night, that yeah. historic spiritual gold medal was just unbelievable to watch. Look at these lines. This is in the looter's loop out of six, seven. Excuse me, that's 50-50, excuse me. He's perfect. Yeah, what a special night. You can, a metaphorical hangover perhaps after yesterday. He's just not quite, maybe got the same intensity or look at the size of over tying the knows? hips down. Look at the size yeah. of these guys. Well, these guys are coming on strong, aren't they? First World Cup win last night. Next up, Nico Volta with Christian Poser. Eighth off the first heat. Two hundreds of a second off seventh. Eight hundreds of a second, uh, four hundreds of a second out of a top six finish. Okay, second in World Cup points. Nico Valta is really a four-man exponent. Exponent. He's had two podiums this year. As you say, he is second in two-man points. 484, but a little waver. And then that wasn't perfect, and he got up a little high in that fallaway curve. But he's got two tenths in the bank. Yeah, he was 800s over one from the first heat. He's now 1900s up, one kilometer an hour faster than the Koreans. Never raced on this track before this week, Nico. Never raced on the Park City track last week. And he won one of the four man events. So, former Luge athlete. 135, great speed. Look at the way he came around the 50 50, like on rails. Speed, awesome, He's, this is a good run. And he'll take the lead away by three tenths, 51-67, not quite as quick as his first heat of 51-55. That'll keep, well, I think that'll keep him in. So Nico Peter's coming. Well, Rico Peter depends uh, what Peter does. Yeah, no, he's, he was pretty close. They're separated by 64, They're, are they tied? No, no, they're... Justin Critton is nine points behind nine Enrique points Pazin. behind, so Peter could yeah. take over second. Could well. A little variance there out of, out of the grooves. Here in the 50-50, look at him cross over. See, he didn't hit that sidewall on the left where that Canada sign is, and that means he gets around this curve. The curve says it's got a green light if you come in that sidewall perfectly. If you come in there too early and hit, the lights go out. Well, one in third place with seven to go will still, no matter what else happens, I think, have the points lead. Look at the way the German coaches just yeah. pump up their athletes. Yeah, they really do. When they've done a good job, they really do. When they haven't done a good job, they'll try and find a way of making it better. Well, last night couldn't be better for Rico Peter and Bro van der Zijder because they won the race. Now, is it Bro? We have on our entry list Thomas Amrein, who did the first heat. No, that does look like Bro van der Zijder. So, last minute change of brake man for the second heat. Yeah, <laughs> Bro van der Zijder is such a huge man. Look at the height of him. 
You sure? I think it is. 484 getaway. Pretty much the same as the first run. Skid out of the curve one and start speed's pretty good. Look how low his profile is in the sled. 600's up. Ooh. Looking for triple digits here. It needs 101 kilometers an hour. That's the best speed we've seen so far. Ooh, Apart from the Cunningham. Gets up on Looter's Loop too high. Six to four. Calm down, Rico. This is Red not the place to be hitting everything. Ooh, ooh, watch out. This is where the problems are. He got in here late. He got through it, though. 135.2, fraction quicker than Nico Walter. Can he close at the line? He Don't really so. needs good speed. 600s, he might do it. No. And no, 700s behind. So that's not going to improve his chances to move up in the World Cup points against Nico Walter. No, he'll finish behind Nico Walter. He'll lose a few more points. And the gap will go out. It's about an eight point difference between positions at this, pos uh, this part of the field. So it'll almost double the difference between them. Look at how low he is here. Really gets around that curve. Uh, this is out of the bottom part of the track, Shiver. And then he hits here. Look at the back end of the sled. Is it airborne? No, see that the other sleds that crashed yeah. all had the bottom runner airborne. Just about got it back, didn't yeah, he? And he here out of 50-50. He's climbing where he should still be peaking and dropping, but yeah, got it off. Still great North America tour, Rico. Mm -hmm. Especially that gold medal last night. Well, now Nico Valter, the race leader, with six to go. So what about Stephen Holcomb and Sam McGuffey? Holcomb. Uh, trying to refine his form yesterday evening in seventh place tonight, six off the first heat. Gonna need a start, 490 in the first round. He's got very different starts from one heat to the next. 600's here. Set. Back to 600's last night from the second to the first heat. Let's see if he can at least match 490, which is what he had in the first heat. He's got a rookie breakman. 490, that's great. If Holcomb needs those consistent starts. Ooh, that's so oh. cool. Wow, the guy who had four perfect trips in the four-man Bob slid out of curve one when he won the gold medal here, just made an uncharacteristic error. I don't think he can recover. Well, Holcomb had astonishing speed in the first heat, an unbelievable pace. Let's see if he can somehow find it again. No, he's two tenths down. He might get it down at 12 or 13, but he could drop a couple places here. He was 135-1, only 132-5 in the second heat. He could drop five places. He's already down to six on the splits, but he's bringing it back. Speed at the bottom, 150.8. He's two kilometers an hour slower, 148.8, and he drops down to sixth position with five to go, and sinks below the cow in disappointment. That's probably the worst heat from curve one to two that he's ever had on this track. It didn't get an awful lot better any further down the ice. Okay, this is how not to do it. Oh, what? No, he was so perfect here. Previous last night, first heat tonight, and look at that. I mean, that's 10th best time of the run. That looked like a rear-wheel drive racing car on ice. He's disappointed with himself. Nico Valter, the race leader, five to go. He's ahead of last night's winners, Rika Peter and Yun Jung Won. 1,200 hundredths of a second cover the top five here at the Whistler Sliding Center. In fifth position, the man who lost out on a medal by one hundredth of a second yesterday, Ugo Salims of Latvia. Studs, Intars, Dambas on the break, the veteran Latvian, huge man, 477. The Latvians own the best starts in the competition. This guy missed the gold medal last night by two hundredths of a second. And, and he wasn't even on the podium. And if you think of it, he crashed in his last trip to practice. So. Well, he thinks this track owes him something, and he might not be wrong, but 97.4 is low speed at that trap. 
What's going on here? Why is he not fast? 30 hundredths, which is relative to the first heat lead and the great start. He's got good lines here down in Shiver, down at 50 50. It's no problem. He didn't have great speed in the first heat. He's two kilometers an hour quicker, though. He's down at the leader. bottom, 145.9. Yeah, that's 151. That's much better. 51 53, only 10 hundred slower. So another top five finish. If he moves up a couple places, he could move up the leaderboard. He's only he's right there next to only 2500s behind Rico Peter in the World Cup points. Well, if so we finishes three of three in advance, if we don't see anything special from the Canadians, the track record will remain in the hands of Alexei Stulnev of Russia. That will be the only track record he's had. Well, Zalim's little rub on the wall, but the That's speed not bad. was not there at the bottom of the track. Well, let's start two hundreds out of the gold yesterday, and he didn't even get a medal. That is a tough race. The best starts in the competition are both 477s in this run by the Latvian sleds, and the best pushers are up next. But and they're wounded. Not. But they're wounded. Yeah. Both of them are are 75 percent of themselves. If they were horses, you wouldn't be saddling them up anytime soon. One's got a bad back, the driver, the brakeman. He's got a it's like you and problem. me. <laughs> bad back and an Achilles. <laughs> we got a few more problems too. But yeah, well, you know, there, there is that. He's got different colored tape on that Achilles tonight. 100th in front of Ugi Salims from the first heat and three out of the medals. Okay, 44. They might just say, listen, we got to go for it. Boy, he got in early there, though. Yeah. This mid 80s, yeah, 41. That's great. They got, they improved. Can he get through here clean? Yeah, that's pretty good. But he's already down to his teammate. Only 300s of a second, though, and Melvardis can drive that back. Nine, three to nine. That's relative to the start. That's what the start does. There's a skid. At four, six, and seven. Much better speed than his first run, though. He's going to need it. Oh, a big tap there. Six to seven was pretty good sign. Stop the bleeding. Now he's got a chance to eat into that deficiency with good lines down here. The former World Cup champion from last year. You know, I don't think he's going to do it. Still higher speed than his first run, down to do six it. hundredths of a second. Might Lead get to 151, five gets it, five hundredths. Zalim moves one spot closer to the medals. And I think Zalman's is going to move ahead of Rico Peter there in World Cup standings. He's ahead of him by three places. It's about 25 points. Zalims was 25 points behind. He might move up another spot. I tell you what, Ugi Zalims will be so desperate for one of the next three sleds to have even uh, yeah. the tiniest issue to give him he, a medal. Runner tips here out of Luder's loop into the chicane. You got to tap there almost everybody. Now the back ends out from him. And now watch him go in. Looks like he goes in a little late into the middle of the curve. Look at his back though. That guy is. He's hurt. He's the best starter in the world. Look at him. Yeah. This is what happens to the bobsled season. People are wounded all over the place. Justin Cripps. Last time we had two Canadians on the podium, Koenigsegg 2014 in the two-man. Cripps won. Lyndon Rush was third. Can 478 in the first run. These Canadians might get a 476. They're pumped. Alex Kopak's behind him. 479. They want a medal here. He sneaks through the curve one without a big variance. He, he lost a little time on the bottom part of the track. Oh, he's near the wall there. Last podium for a Canadian slider in Canada in the men's competition. Jesse Lumsden pushed Chris Spring onto the podium in Calgary in 2013. Down by two. Oh, this is going to be achingly tight for Zalims. If he's 100 ahead, that will be redemption. If he's 100 behind, that will be time to go and kick something. Cripps 800s back now. 134.9 is Ten. much quicker than Zalims, but has funny. he got the speed at the no. final corner? No, not enough. So Zalim's in the medals. First medal for Zalim yes. since St. Moritz last year when he tied for a silver, his first and only medal ever. And considering what he went through last night, 
you know. And Cripps is third, he's out of the podium. Well, he no, he won't take, he's third, he won't take a medal. There's, maybe he might, there are yeah, still two still sleds to come. Never, never say never. Well, this Latvians, track. one, two at the moment, 500s apart. What a turnaround from Just, yesterday's performance. Justin had some issues up top. Yeah. Right here, look at him hug that wall. That's, that didn't help. And then here in the, watch the lines here. And, that's in the 50 50. That looked okay. Yeah. Let's see, up top is. Didn't like his lines up top. Good there start. Third place. Latvians 1 2. Two sleds to go. Next up, Chris Spring on a fine roller form in the first heat with Lazarus Brown behind him. Let's see if the Springer can get himself right back at the top of the podium again. Fifth place yesterday, he won his first ever World Cup medal here in a four-man in 2012. This is great where they just everybody gets quiet up there. Utter, you can hear a pin drop. Pin drops up there. It's pretty Absolutely. awesome. Everybody, the spectators, a lot of pressure. 480, 100 off. Let's see if he gets through here. Good. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Now the gaps are tiny. He was only 700s in front of Moldavis, 800s in front of Zalims from the first three. heat. Well, he Down didn't start three. as quick as them. He gets, if this stays at four or five, that means he stops the bleeding. 99.9, both Latvian sleds had more speed from their start. Oh, yeah, he's pulled away now. Here, but he rubs That's the wall. That's a great sign. That's not going to hurt him too much. Right, Springer is not looking at the Latvians in the rear view. He's looking at the Russian who only led him he's by 400s. 132.2. Hold it together, Chris. This is a medal for Canada. Chris Spring of Canada looking to win a wet race here in Canada, and he takes the lead by two tenths. 51.41. Tom Delahunty and Stefan Bosch are thrilled, and so is Chris Spring, and that might be, might be enough for gold. What it is, is enough to push Cripps off the podium, so there will be not two Canadians on the podium, but there will be one. Maybe one of the well, most well-liked athletes on tour. Boy, he's been in a slump. <laughs> he came out of it in a nice way tonight. Won his first ever World Cup medal here in 2012. If he wins his first two-man race here, that would be a great return to Whistler. The Springer and the King. Wow. What happened last night? Alexander Kashyanov of Russia led after the first heat and didn't win. Can he hold on this time? He's going to give up a lot of time here at the start. He's going to have to get 490. Or he's going to be in a push. Big... Karev will give it everything. Ooh, watch out. He's going to hit the wall and it's... it's over. 490 it was a quicker start, but he's already in the red. 600s behind. I think it's over. I yeah. can't see him recovering from this. He's dead now. It's 22. If he keeps the balloon. 25, maybe. He might be out of the medal. When he gets 35 time. or 40, you will have two Canadians on the podium. No, because Cripps is still fourth. Okay. Unless we did eliminate a, a Latvian. 100.8, great speed, but not enough. It's not going to come back. He is going to drop five spots. He will be behind Justin Cripps. Chris Spring of Canada oh, is goal. going to win in Whistler. Kasyanov can't hold it together. Still gets a bronze. Look at that. He still sneaks in there for a bronze. Wow. Over Mel Bardis by a hundred. How did he find that at the bottom? That's what happened yesterday. He led after he won bronze was the end result. Wow. What a recovery, though. Still to get a bronze medal out of that mistake. Look at He was down to fifth. Oh, dear. That is a Canadian in the very early stages of a major hangover. I know exactly where they're going to be. Alex Kopax goes down to congratulate him and the whole team. What happened here?
Oh. He ranks didn't up get in, oh, didn't have control, hit the wall. Yeah, yeah, I'm still left shocked right the center. that he still recovered to yeah. at least win a bronze medal. Fifth at 50-50, he somehow found speed to get third. Cripps offers his congratulations. Thank you. Man, thank you so much, Cam. Thank you, So the Canadians were the gold and the women's Bob Golden, one of the two man Bobs. Yeah. Uh, Alexei Pushkarev goes to offer his congratulations. Still five different nations winning uh, gold medals here that's, this weekend. That's a classy, classy performance from Pushkarev. They just saw it slip away again, and yet he goes to say, well done. And the stud on the right, we call the king. He's 42 years young, and he probably runs around like a 22-year-old. Oldest winner in the modern era as the fireworks go off to celebrate two days of great sliding at the Whistler Sliding Center. Oh, Springer. We've seen some pop sled racing the last two nights, I can say that. Wow. He did it. Another first, first time winner. Thrilled Chris Spring and Lasalis Brown. They claim the gold medal here. Great run. They were only 400 out of lead in the first heat. Two sparkling drives from Chris Spring, two huge pushes from the duo, and they put themselves into the leader's box. And they held on, and Alexander Kasyanov couldn't match them down the track. He finished in third place. But Ugi Salims, 100th out of the medals yesterday, Finally. takes a silver here in Whistler. The fastest ice on the planet rewards Canada's Chris Spring and Lascelles Brown with gold. Well, we talked about multiple Canadian podiums. No multiple Canadian podium here because Justin Cripps finishes in fifth place. But Chris Spring on the top of the step, top step, ahead of Ugus Alims and Alexander Kasyanov. Kelly Humphreys, Helen Upton for the women shared three podiums together in women's bobsleigh, most recently gold and bronze here in 2012, which was Helen's last World Cup race. Of three. Kelly went to gold earlier today. Three different races we had today on the Super Speedway, the Whistler yep. Sliding Center. Three track records that were all from the Olympic Games. Wow, great performance from everybody in the Whistler Sliding Center to provide a spectacular track for two days of racing. They fought the elements early in the week and they really had to fight them hard. We had the better part of a foot of snow during training one morning and then it rained all the next day and a half and that does horrendous things to a track and they kept the track live all the way through and the end result track records falling like nine pins the fastest ice anybody has ever seen in sliding and that is a great testament to everybody here in bc the whistler sliding center the fastest track on the planet just got faster and the fastest man in the place alexander kashanov comes away with the bronze the gold Cruelly slipping from his fingers today, as it did yesterday. And hope to see everybody who had those crashes earlier on in our heats. Oscar's Cuba Manis, Mattis Miknis, Dongyum Kim and Kimbo, uh, Kwembo Kim, and Nick Cunningham and Carlo Valdez. They were all out of the sleds and didn't require further medical attention. I'm sure they will be feeling very sore tomorrow and a bit banged up. Hopefully, no worse than that. Well, what a fantastic facility this is, a fantastic track, and just epic racing. There hasn't been a dull moment all week long, and the races were the crown in glory. Mother Nature turned on the weather uh, lights as well. Some beautiful conditions today for sliding. Uh, great work from everybody at this facility to remind us just why we need to keep coming back here. This track is one of the greats. Lots of noise from the Canadian fans for the first ever win in two-man for Chris Spring. But Yun Jong Won continues to lead the World Cup standings from Nico Valter. Ugis Zalims moves up to third ahead of Rico Peter. Justin Cripps in fifth ahead of Oscars Melbardis and Max Arndt. And Stephen Holcomb, 10th spot. 
as Francesco Friedrich, who led at Christmas with an unblemished three for three winning record, slumps now to ninth position in the standings. Two World Cup races remain, but the World Championship positions will be decided after the next one, because the final World Cup comes after the World Championships. Spring moves up to 11th ahead of Nick Cunningham and Oscar's Kiba Manis. And uh, Kiba Manis in a real tailspin at the moment, crashed out of today's race, tied with Alexei Stolnev, who also can't find the pace that he should have. But boy, oh boy, way to go. If they're not doing a John Montgomery through town tonight, I shall be surprised. Chris Springler, Sellers Brown, third fastest push in the first heat, fourth fastest push in the second heat. And Spring, that was enough to allow him to get within four hundredths of the leader in heat one and to beat him by 28 hundredths in heat two to take gold away from Alexander Kastyanov. The first heat showed us that Springer has what it takes. The second was just absolutely from the very top draw. 51.69 didn't quite get close enough to eclipse the track record, set in the first heat of 51. Uh, not 51.57, he beat that, didn't he, Alexander Kasyanov, to, to post a new record. But nevertheless, Chris Spring takes victory. It's 51.31, the new record. Kasyanov, second right. And uh, Ugi Salim's second left. And there, in the entertaining Winterberg hat, is Chris Spring. So is Brown looking a little more dapper. But victory for the Canadians here at the Whistler Sliding Centre. Uga Zalims in silver, his first medal of the season, and a second bronze medal for Alexander Kasyanov, who doesn't look utterly crushed by that, does he? And rightly not. That's it then from the fastest track on the planet. We go to the second fastest and the most historic. Next up, Samaritz in Switzerland. Two weeks from now, on behalf of John Morgan, the IBSF TV crew, everybody who's helped make these North American productions so fun and so entertaining. Thank you for watching us, watching them. We'll see you in Samaritz. Until then, goodbye from Whistler.